Elon Musk and Jordan Peterson both said that large language models have passed the Turing test. Now, I made a video about this almost a year ago, and in my opinion, I realized that large language models also passed the Turing test. Chad GPT passed the Turing test. But let's find out what they said exactly in this interview. I mean, the LLMs are remarkable, right? And they certainly passed the Turing test as far as I'm concerned. Yes, they passed the Turing yes. test. Musk agrees that from a testing perspective, AI systems have already passed or close to passing the Turing test. And also Elon says that the progress of AI is rapid. So if the, if the AI systems still haven't passed the, the Turing test fully in all aspects, they are on the brink of doing so. From, from, from a testing standpoint, I think we will, if, if we're not there already, we soon will be where you would not be able to tell that you're yeah. interacting with a yeah, computer. Or, that's coming right away, man. Yeah. He notes that it's increasingly difficult to distinguish between interacting with humans and sophisticated AI systems, unless a tricky, specific question is asked. And Jordan Peterson said the same thing. He said, unless you corner the damn thing with, with specific questions. In fact, probably. Sort of here. And, unless you're yeah. really sneaky and you ask, like, harsh questions and corner the damn things, we're probably already there. Yeah, so you, should, you, you know, don't know. If, if you know some of the tricks, like how many R's are there in renderer, um, <laughs> and, and Bizarrely can't figure that one out. Oh, I didn't know that that was one of its... Yeah, so it has these weird lacuna in its knowledge, right? Well, it's, so, it's, it, divides, that, it divides everything into tokens, and those tokens are more than one letter. And so it, 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 it actually, weirdly, it's, it's myopic with respect right, to single letters. Right, I see. So it's got a resolution problem. Yeah, from Jordan Peterson's perspective, he mentioned that based on his experience with ChatGPT, he believes that it passed the Turing test. And he compares interacting with ChatGPT and, and dealing with a team of a master's degree uh, level of students. That's what he described it, indicating a high level of AI sophistication and the ability to generate some human-like responses. My sense with ChatGPT, I have worked with lots of undergraduates and graduates, yeah. so my my sense with ChatGPT is if you can corner it into behaving properly, that you kind of have something approximating a team of, I would say, master's degree level intelligence and something like that. Peterson emphasizes the practical utility of these AI systems in assisting with tasks such as research and writing. And I agree with that. I mean, I use ChatGPT almost every single day. It's, it's my personal assistant at this point. It's my Jarvis. Now, Musk also talked about Grok AI. If you haven't heard of Grok AI, let's say that it's the AI model that is developed by Musk's company, XAI. Musk says that it's designed to deeply understand various modalities, including text, images, and video. Of course, it's multimodal, just like ChatGPT. He also mentions the current models of Grok AI, 1.5 and the upcoming 2 and 3. He says that Grok AI is the fastest learning language model and by the end of this year, he says that it will probably be the most powerful AI system out there. Wow. Now, those are really big claims. We're catching up fast. I think with the, the velocity of improvement of XAI is faster than uh, any other company out there. Um, we just completed the... Um, we, just, we, we were just able to install and bring online um, a, a massive new training center that we, like, as I mentioned, we're building in in Memphis, um, and it's uh, from getting hardware installation to it beginning training, it was only 19 days. And that's the fastest by far that anyone's uh, been able to do that. So we're, we're, moving, we're moving quickly, but we're still catching up. And so if you use- Catching up to who? Well, catching up to, um, say, Gemini, uh, ChatGPT, Claude, yeah. uh, and the others. Um, so- And how do you feel that Grok we're catching up fast. How do you feel that Grok performs, say, in relationship to ChatGPT now? Well, um, so the, the, the Grok version that's been released is still based on Grok 1, version 1 training. Um, yeah. We've made several improvements, so it's sort of called Grok 1.5. Uh, but the foundation model of, of Grok is still uh, an order of magnitude uh, weaker than uh, ChatGPT. Um, Oh, yes. So okay. it's, it's, doing, it's doing quite well, given that order of magnitude um, difference. And this new system, how powerful is it compared, let's say, to ChatGPT? Well, so 
Uh, Grok 2 uh, actually finished training. Um, now, Grok 2 was training um, with, uh, we call it roughly 15,000 GPUs, um, and, and they're H100. So, it, 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 Grok 2 finished training uh, about a month ago. We're doing what's called fine tuning, um, fixing bugs, and, and whatnot. So, we'll release Grok 2, which will be, um, should be on par with, uh, so, or close to a, 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 a GPT 4. Okay. Uh, and that, that's uh, hopefully. We release that uh, next month. Um, then uh, what we're doing in the Memphis Data Center is we're actually training Grok 3. Uh, oh. So th that'll probably finish training in about three or four months, and then there'll be some fine-tuning and bug fixing and whatnot. And we're hoping to release Grok 3 by December, um, and Grok 3 should be the most powerful AI uh, in the world at that point. So final notes on this matter, they both agree that AI systems have already either passed the test or very close to passing the Turing test. And you are a remarkably forward-looking person, so what do you, what the hell do you think you're building with these AI systems? Like, what is this? Well, I think really what, uh, what all the AI companies are aiming to build is um, digital, digital superintelligence. Um, so, uh, you know, intelligence that's far smarter than any, any human. Yeah. Um, and then ultimately an intelligence that is far smarter than all humans combined. Uh, that's, that's, now, now one can say like, is this a wise thing to do? Isn't this, isn't this dangerous? Well, unfortunately, whether we think that or not is it is being done. Um, so yeah. the re really, you know, from the standpoint of. My, from my standpoint, from the XAI team standpoint, we are really we have the choice of being a spectator or a participant. But yeah, that's life, man. Yeah, be a spectator or or a p participant, and um, I think if we're a participant, we've got a better chance, hopefully, of steering uh, AI in the direction that is beneficial to humanity. Are you kidding me right now? This is real artificial intelligence. It has passed the Turing test. Again, I could be wrong because no machine before has exhibited that kind of intelligence and passed the Turing test. Maybe I didn't do it correctly 100%. This is my understanding of the Turing test. Maybe I'm wrong, but from my understanding, this thing has exhibited intelligence. It understood. It tried to deceive me. It lied to my face for the first time. Not because I have nefarious purposes, God forbid, no. But because it understood that this is a Turing test and it's supposed to make me believe that it's a human and not a machine. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new future. Welcome to the world of artificial intelligence. Pretty soon, I think the entire world is going to see a new chapter in human history. We're going to be able to talk to our machines like never before. Our machines will be able to understand our queries and our questions and would be able to help us the best they could. Of course, we already talked about the dangers of that as well. But now in this video, I want to be positive. Let's put all the negative aspects aside, including losing jobs or Skynet or taking over and all that stuff. Let's think about the remarkable applications of artificial intelligence and how AI is going to be a part of our lives. Remember, chat GPT is a language model that was developed by AI and it was trained on a on a large corpus of text. And pretty soon it's going to have access to real data, to the real world data. And, and pretty soon we are not going to be able to beat this thing. Elon was right. What's going to happen is robots will be able to do everything better than us. I'm, I'm including, I mean, all of us, you know. I can't think of a single application where a human being can beat this machine. Think of this as a calculator in every single field, even the creative field as well. It can write an article for you in a second, five seconds to be exact. This is crazy. It can do creative work for you. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you really like my video, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell icon to get more videos in the future. Thank you guys and have a great day.